time for some more lockdown embryology with me, Alice Roberts. We're moving into the fourth week of embryonic development in the womb now, although I'm cheating a little bit because this embryo that I'm starting with here is actually towards the end of the third week of development. It's probably around 20 days after the time of fertilisation of the egg. A lot has happened since then. We've had the formation of a ball of cells, then the blastocyst, the fluid-filled ball of cells implanted in the uterus. The embryo itself, the inner cells, develop into a two-layered bilaminar germ disc, and now that has become a trilaminar germ disc with ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. Now that mesoderm, the jam in the middle, starts off being quite a loose, fluffy tissue, but then it begins to consolidate into a sausage of tissue lying either side of the notochord called the paraxial mesoderm and then just beyond that is another sausage called the intermediate mesoderm. Moving towards the edges of the jam sandwich we've got the lateral plate mesoderm and what you can see here is that starting to cavitate a bit and then actually that pulls apart and we get a cleft which extends inside the embryo almost as though you've taken your jam sandwich and you're just pulling apart the pieces of bread but each piece of bread still has a layer of jam on it so the jam next to the ectoderm piece of bread is the parietal or somatic mesoderm and the layer next to the endoderm is the visceral or splanchnic mesoderm then in the center of this embryo is the notochord that rod that forms from tissue that's turning in on itself at the primitive pit and that rod is now starting to talk to the overlying ectoderm. There are particular genes that are switched on in the notochord and associated tissues that mean the cells start to secrete proteins with wonderful names like noggin, cordin and folistatin and these proteins act as chemical messengers talking to the overlying ectoderm and encouraging it to thicken up and start folding in. So I've just drawn a little section from the center of this cross section through the embryo here with the notochord beginning to talk to that overlying ectoderm at around 19 days after fertilization. Moving along, we can see the ectoderm is starting to fold down. So a groove is forming in the ectoderm, that's at 20 days. And then a day or so later, we can see that that groove has deepened and the ectoderm is starting to form a kind of tube beneath the surface at 22 days. By 23 days, we can see that tube of ectoderm has now completely detached itself from the overlying ectoderm. That, that tube is now something different. We call it the neural tube. So the neural tube is forming out of ectoderm under the influence of chemical messages coming from the notochord and tissues around the notochord. Now there's a particular group of cells I just want to focus on. They start off life here at the top of the neural folds and then they actually detach themselves and start moving around inside the embryo. They're called neural crest cells. So they come from that neural crest, the top of the neural fold, but they end up all over the place. They end up in the sympathetic nervous system. They end up in your teeth. They end up in some of the bones of your face. They end up in your adrenal medulla. And I might do another whole video about those because they're absolutely fascinating, but it's important to note their origin at this point in time. Now, having looked at how the neural tube forms in cross sections, let's have a look at a slightly more three-dimensional representation of that. So I want you to imagine that you're floating in the amniotic cavity, looking down on the top of that trilaminar germ disc, and you can see the ectoderm, and you can see the way it's thickening up, and it's almost like a kind of spoon shape at this point. And then the edges of it start to pull in as we see those neural folds forming and then the folds come together and it starts to fuse. And it doesn't fuse all the way along its length at the same time. It starts in the middle and then it zips up towards the top and down towards the bottom. I've also shown a bulge on either side of this forming neural tube, which is now divided up into lots of bead-like segments. That's the paraxial mesoderm just under the surface. And the bead-like segments in it are called somites. These are body segments forming. So the neural tube is now zipped up until we've just got an opening at the top, the anterior neuropore that closes at day 25. And then down at the caudal end, the posterior neuropore closes over a little later on day 28. 
that's a very common theme in embryonic development. Things up the head end of the embryo are developing a little bit ahead of things down towards the tail end. Now going back to those cross sections, I was focusing in on a very small central part of the germ disc to show the development of the neural tube. But if we look at the whole of the germ disc in cross section, we can see that it has really changed shape in week four. Just compare this diagram I'm working on at 22 days with the one to the left, which is just towards the end of week three. And you can see that the disc has curled around. So ectoderm is now lying around the outside of this embryo. So it's closed itself in ectoderm, it's pulled the amniotic sac right around itself, it's pinched off a bit of endoderm within the embryo and that's going to be the precursor of the gut tube but it's still attached to the yolk sac on the outside of the embryo as well. So the main changes that have happened during week four are neurulation, the formation of a neural tube which is the foundation of the central nervous system, the brain and the spinal cord. And if things go wrong at this point, they can have disastrous consequences. Neural tube defects originate from failures of that neural tube to close. What we've also seen in week four is this folding of the embryo, which really transforms a flat disc into something which looks a little bit more like a human body. But there's still a long way to go. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like, please share, and I'll be back soon with a little bit more on embryonic folding, and then we'll start to look at some of the organ systems of the developing embryo. Thank you for listening and watching.